How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you. So let us know first, where are you checking in from? I'm in Los Angeles. Okay, cool. So let's jump right in. I'm so excited that also you're going to be performing some music. So that's going to be a super special treat for our guests. Let's talk about if the world is ending. It's already about to reach 100 million views. Absolutely crazy. And there's been over 500,000 uh, videos on TikTok of people that have used the song. So it's absolutely going crazy. I want you to take us back to last summer when you and Julia Michaels wrote the song. Can you just paint the picture of the setting of the creative session? Like, what was it looking like? Where were you guys at? What was the, what was the vibe of the conversation? How did the song, how did the song come about? Yeah, well, originally we connected because she shared a song of mine called 25 in Barcelona on her Instagram story. And yes, when one she, of my favorites off the EP for sure. Thank you. Uh, and when she shared that, I was mid-conversation about how I thought she was the most influential songwriter of our generation. So it was this strange, serendipitous connection. Wow. Uh, so we got talking. Um, she's, she's got, yeah, we got talking. She suggested we write. And not long after that, we were in the studio. And we actually met the day we wrote If the World Was Ending. Um, yeah, definitely the most magical session of my life. Um, you know, it was just her and I. Were you guys having like a conversation that led to the lyrics or did you already kind of have a concept and you guys just were feeding off of energy? Yeah. So I had written, if the world was ending, you'd come over right in my journal, like a year and a half before the session. Wow. And I, I had written it as like an attempt at finishing this other song. Often my next songs are my failed attempt at finishing the previous songs. Cause like I'll get a section that I like, but it won't really fit with the other sections. Right. So I'm just sitting in my journal. And then when the earthquake in Los Angeles happened last 4th of July, I remembered the line yeah. and got home. I was messing with at the piano and, and stopped myself like mid melody and thought, you know, I'm gonna save this for Julia because I was nervous about the session, right? Like one of my favorite wow. songs. Ever. Now I yeah. wanted to make sure I had something that I liked. So that was my, that was kind of like my idea in my pocket going to the session and she liked it. And we got talking about that idea of, you know, if nothing else mattered anymore, like how would you put love first? Absolutely. I think the timing of everything is so crazy. Obviously no one could have anticipated where 2020 was headed. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, the song is just about love over everything. Like if you put all the BS aside, if you just, you know, if we get down to real human nature, like, we can't deny those loving feelings. And right now with so much reflecting going on, I mean, the song was destined not only for you two to collaborate and create an amazing song, but it's the soundtrack to so many people's lives right now. And, and it's just like, it's a crazy period of reflection. How does that feel? How does that feel to just have that divine timing? Uh, it, it feels a lot of different ways on, on different days. Um, I mean, at first I was definitely, like when I started seeing in early March, when Julian and I started seeing that the song was connecting in this different way, yeah. you know, when we all started going into quarantine, we were a little conflicted about it. Like we weren't sure if, if like that was something that we could let ourselves be happy about. Because yeah. obviously as an artist, like you always want your music to take on some sort of cultural relevance. Definitely. But this is this is not at all what I ever had in mind. Um, and I'm sure for you know, guys, it's taken on even you know a different meaning now. Now, just you know, looking back or just listening to it evolve over this past year, like I'm sure it has meant different things to you guys. Totally. I mean, I've tried to be really clear in the promotion of this song that I that this song it does not condone the texting of exes. I'm. <laughs> I do not want to encourage anyone to text their ex. I, I strongly believe that love will always get better than a love that doesn't want you back. Um, and, you know, love <laughs> with in most cases, and I'm sure there are exceptions, but in most cases, if a relationship ends, it ended for a reason. Right. And missing them a whole lot is not a good enough reason to neglect all of those other reasons. I realize hearing the dude who's singing about like wanting someone to come over in the apocalypse who you don't talk to anymore is like not who you'd like to get relationship advice from, but I, I genuinely mean it. And <laughs> the places that this song is like connected and meant the most to me is when, you know, we did this, uh, this benefit version for Doctors Without Borders. Absolutely. Um, and I, I heard stories from 
you know, the Doctors Without Borders staff, like landing in countries, listening to if the world was ending because they wow. felt, you know, in the most dire of situations for the people in the world suffering with the most extreme circumstances, they're the people who will always come over. Definitely, definitely. You guys had a superstar lineup for that rendition. Her, Niall Horan, I mean, the, uh, Alessia Cara, the list goes on and on. So were those people that you and Julia handpicked or were they just, was it just, you know, like a group effort of friends that all pitched in or did you guys kind of handpick them and call them up? Hey, you know, we have this song. We would love to put this out there, uh, uh, you know, raise money for Doctors With Borders and help out those who have been affected by COVID-19. I mean, basically, we just text all of our friends and everyone who said yes is in the video. <laughs> all incredible, incredible artists. So that's super, super awesome. OK, I want to take a break from the questions really quickly. And I would love if you could perform If the World is Ending for us right now. Yeah, we'll start with that one. OK. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> It's honestly refreshing not see like I love seeing the comments when we do these things because like I feel like it simulates an audience. But right. my, but my fans are a little a, like it, they're the most wonderful in the silliest of ways and they I really think, are. And when Let I play this, like, song, when I was tweeting out for you, I've never had that many people respond. They have been going ham all day. Like I love, I love it. them. I love them so much and I've gotten used to when I perform on live streams that they're just yelling things at me in comments. So this is going to be such a different experience. Just it's going to be so peaceful just like you and me here. Right. I was distracted and in traffic. I didn't feel it when the earthquake happened, but it really got me thinking. Were you out drinking? Were you in the room chilling, watching television? It's been me now. Think I figured out how I to let you know mm -hmm. that communication died. I know you know you know you were down for further. It's fine. I know you know you know you were down for further. It's fine. But if the world was ending, you come mm -hmm. over right. Come over and stay the night. Would you love me for a hell of it? All our fears would be irrelevant. If the world was ending, you'd come over right. It's got to be far and I'd hold it tight. And there wouldn't be a reason why. We would even have to say goodbye. If the world was ending, you'd come over right. Right. If the world was ending, you would come on. Right. Right. I tried to imagine your reaction. It didn't scare me when the earthquake happened, but it really got me thinking. That night we went drinking, stung up in the house and didn't make it past the kitchen. Oh, it's been me and I think I'll figure out how to do that. How to think about you without it ripping my heart out. And I know, you know, you know, you were down for forever, it's fine. I know, you know, you know, you were ready for each other, it's fine. But if the world was ending, you'd come over, right? You'd come over and you'd stay the night. But you love me for the hell of it. All our fears would be irrelevant if the world was ending. We'd come over right. Sky be falling and I'd hold it tight. And there wouldn't be a reason why we would even have to say goodbye. If the world was ending, you'd come over right. You'd come over right. You'd come over. You'd come over. You'd come over. You'd come over. You'd come over right. And I know you know, you know you were in doubt for further, it's fine. I know you know, you know we were made for each other, and it's fine. But if the world was ending, you come over, right? 
You come over and stay the night. If you love me for the hell of it, all our fears will be irrelevant. If the world was ending, you come over, right? It's gotta be falling and I hold you tight. And there wouldn't be a reason why. We for now this if the world was heavy, you come over right now. You come over, you come over, you come over right If the world was heavy, you come over right Beautiful! So beautiful. I loved it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I love that I feel like I'm getting my own private serenade. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Okay, so you recently released a song called Hey Stupid, I Love You. Mm -hmm. Oh, first question, your fans want to know, what was your personal favorite line to something that you're like, hmm, when you hear it? <laughs> um, Probably back after the second verse, the, like, nothing's wrong, tell me to settle down, you do it better than I've ever known how. That's probably yes. my favorite part. Originally, when I wrote the song, it was her saying it to me. Okay. Like the whole time. But just in, in throughout the songwriting process and making like the perspective really clear, I decided just to make it me talking to her because it's a little bit true too. But yeah, that's that back. I would say up. like in watching your videos and just diving in, I love your personality. And I feel like from the title to just the lyrics, like it really shines through just like the fun quirkiness. And every relationship has its insecurities, its jealousies. And you know, we love, women love our reassurance. You gotta let us know. So I super love those lyrics because of that. And also it kind of made me think, well, first I wanted to ask, was that a song that you have written in these past couple of months while we've been home? Uh, I wrote that end of last year, kind okay. of inspired by, you know, time on my last tour. Okay, okay. Because I really wanted to ask, I was like, was this um, something that he was thinking about, like in this time that they've been quarantined together or, you know, almost the feeling of like missing someone that isn't even gone yet. Like just because the world is gonna be different when things go back and right now in your relationship, you guys get to spend awesome time together. But at some point you both will be touring all over the world. And I was just like, you know, you, you we kind of stress, sometimes as couples, we can stress about things that haven't even happened yet. So I love oh, that because I feel like it hits all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to make someone feel love from far away. I mean, it's it's hard to make someone feel love from up close sometimes too. Yes. Um, but I think a previous version of myself, I'm hyper logical, right? Like I really am like such an overthinker, very rational. I'm also extraordinarily emotional, which I think is what has led me to being a songwriter because it's kind of that <laughs> intersection of yes. being hyper rational and like hyper emotional at the same time. But because of that, you know, in the past, when someone that I cared about really deeply would say something to me like, I'm not sure if you love me, my reaction would be like, that's so dumb. How could you possibly yeah. think that? That's absurd. Right. Um, and like try to convince them why that, that was, why that was a silly way to feel. Um, yes. But like this song is kind of like, it, it's in my realization that it's a lot easier to just give someone more love than to convince them they don't need it. Yes. Um, it's like, if someone's like, hey, like, I just, do you like really love me? Do you feel it? And if you do, just like hold them and kiss them until they believe you. Yes. Rather than tell them they're an idiot. Definitely. I love that. The Hold It Together EP came out in February earlier this year. And 25 in Barcelona was definitely a favorite. I had that on super repeat today. But I wanted to ask you, how does it feel to be dating another incredible songwriter and then i'm i'm going through the ep and i hear three minutes and i'm like he took it there like he he said it i just love your honesty because it's just so so raw and then it made me wonder like as two songwriters that are incredible and you guys you know put your hearts out and your vulnerability vulnerability out to the world like are there ever subjects that even just during this time being in the same house like are there things that y'all don't feel comfortable saying in front of each other or maybe she might run to the grocery store and you're like Okay, let me go to the piano and get this off real quick. Or is it just like, no, you just keep it real. I mean, there there are pros and cons, for sure. <laughs> uh, mostly pros. I, I always used to say I would never date another songwriter. I messed that one up. Um, but, I mean, look, connecting with your partner in any way 
is one of the most special things in the world. So to be able to share my love for her with her and my love for songwriting with her has been really special. I think it's hilarious that my girlfriend edits the love songs about her. <laughs> like that's such a unique scenario that I think. Is just, just, I love it. Like she, she makes my love songs about her better by being oh, herself gosh. and by giving me song notes. <laughs> That's super, super cute. Okay, so is um, I want to take another short break from the questions because we're loving the music. Is there anything else that you would like to play for us right now? Um, Yeah, you can pick. What do you want to hear? Hmm, oh, 25 in Barcelona. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I thought you would have called yesterday I said I didn't want you to, but I still thought you I don't know what I expected you to say But I turned 25 and I had in my mind you'd be part of that in some way I'm halfway around the world with all these people Happy in a foreign language they don't know a thing about you I'm halfway around the world in Barcelona Trying not to think you'd love it This wasn't supposed to be about you This wasn't supposed to be about you I wonder how it crossed your mind I'm sure I did, but I'm curious what the thought of me felt like Was it harder than you imagined it would be? Cause when I missed you 30, it almost fucking killed me I'm halfway around the world with all these people happy in a foreign language, they don't know a thing about you. I'm halfway around the world in Barcelona, singing songs to you for strangers, trying not to think about you. This wasn't supposed to be about you. This wasn't supposed to be about you. I'm halfway around the world with all these people Happy in a foreign language They don't know a thing about you I'm halfway around the world in Barcelona Trying to feel my world expand Like none of it was built around you This wasn't supposed to be about 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 you. Yes. Oh my gosh, so amazing. Okay. Absolutely love it. Love it. Okay, so a lot of your fans were hitting me up on Twitter. And of course, we're loving the EP. Keeping it in rotation. I still feel like there's so many great songs on there. All of them, I can feel your heart through all of them. So I'm like, okay, we this will suffice for now. But your fans are hungry for more. And they're like, JP, when is the album coming out? They want 10 to 15 songs. When can we expect it? Uh, I'm trying to get it up by the end of the year. Okay. Maybe early next year. Okay. But hopefully by the end of the year. Okay, awesome. And it's have like, you entertained any ideas? I'm sorry, have you entertained any um, album names? Or are you just going with the flow right now? Mm, I don't know what the name of the album is yet. Uh, I think it'll just, like, Hold It Together was the last song I wrote on Hold It Together. And it ended up being just, like, a no-brainer name for the EP. Yeah. So 
I'm waiting for it to make itself obvious to me. Definitely, definitely. I know it will come to you when the time is right or when the song, when it's just that song. Okay, so before we close out, I want to ask you a few questions that your fans are dying to know. Meg Roll <laughs> V on Twitter asked, what did he name the slot? <laughs> Someone suggested today naming it Sid, which is a cute name for a slot. So I true, guess the slot, I, I told them they could name the slot. So Sid oh my sounds gosh. good. I like Sid. I like Sid. Sid Natalia fly. on Twitter asks, what's your favorite smell in the world? My favorite smell. I get this question surprisingly often, and I feel like I have a different <laughs> answer every time. Um, I like the smell of cinnamon rolls. That's a good oh, yeah. smell. Like a like a good like a good bougie candle. Yeah, like I'll come candle, home. Yes. <laughs> like a candle that you spend that you spend too much money on for something that you're literally going to burn. Um, <laughs> but like, definitely me. I really really like expensive candles. Me too, man. Oh, they just burn too quickly. <laughs> okay, Marina on Twitter wants to know, what is the weirdest thing you've spotted out happening in the audience while you've been on stage? The weirdest thing. Um, I did a show in Detroit once where a girl fainted mid-song. That wasn't weird. It was kind of scary. She was yeah. fine. But it ended up being really beautiful because the audience really rallied around this one girl and she was just... fine. Like for the rest of the set, we were all just more of a team. But we're, Aww. oh, well, this isn't weird either, but there's been a lot of proposals. I saw, I've seen that you've said that recently and I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, how does that feel? Like just one of the most defining moments and memories to last a lifetime in somebody's life at your show. How do you react? It's the coolest thing. There was, <laughs> there was a show in Toronto where, uh, a girl proposed to her girlfriend during the few things, but she had like prepared a speech. So like I had to, ex I had to extend the outro like by two and a half <laughs> minutes so she could get through her speech. You know, I wasn't gonna cut her off. It. Her proposal was more important than my show. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, Claudia on Facebook wants to know, knowing everything you do now, going, every going through everything that you've gone through, what advice would you give a 16 year old JP Sachs? A 16-year-old J.P. Sachs, worry less about acne. You see it more than other people. <laughs> it, like, it really, I used to, it used to really debilitate me. Uh, yes. I would like not want to leave the house if it was really bad. Yeah. Um, it was, like so insecure. That was like my primary insecurity as a young person. And I wish I could tell young J.P. that like no one, no one fucking cared other than you. <laughs> that was definitely me too. And thinking back to that age, it's like, yeah, that's like a big deal, you know, especially in school, you're just like, oh. Like I would love to give you something like slightly more like philosophical, like learn to accept yourself before you get other people to accept you. But like, I wouldn't have figured that out at 16. So I'm trying to be practical with my 16 year old self. That is a, that is an actionable item. Have you had any um, just revelations or just like, newfound thoughts or conversations with your with your friends or with your girl in the house during this time that you're like you know what i want to take some of those ideas and and trickle them into the into this upcoming music that i'm creating hmm. or maybe just like a the theme of what quarantine has meant to you Oof, uh, a lot of things come to mind i watch a lot of shark tank and they've had some like dope advice lately yeah <laughs> But that's more like my entrepreneurial dorky side. Um, a realization I made in the studio over the last couple of days was this is not relatable. This is very me musician specific, whatever I'll tell you anyway, is that when I get into the studio, I'm thinking about the kind of music I want to make in the studio, which is like singer songwriter and emotional and like very like sit alone in your room and listen on headphones kind of music. But when I get up on stage, like I want to be like, I want to be jamming with my friends and like, stretching on like the jazz music that I like grew up listening like some shit that's more mm -hmm. fun so yeah. I, I'm realizing that for this album it can't just be the album I want to play in the studio it has to be the album I want to play on stage too yes. so some of the songs I've been making recently are with that more in mind because I think I have the like very lyricy very emotional very like in your feeling side of the album covered and now i'm like making sure i have the side of the album covered that's like the songs that we're going to have a really good time to in the show do you feel like that's also because <clears throat> as you're evolving just as an artist and and stepping more into just 
being on this huge platform, especially right now, you have a huge spotlight on you transitioning from being a songwriter to now it's just like you're, you know, it's, it's, it's changing. Is that also affecting like those thoughts of like, um, you know, think about yourself on, on huge festival stages and, you know, just like wanting to be with the pe feeling the people, the thousands and thousands of people. Cause I'm just thinking like after quarantine or after staying at home, the millions of people that are singing your song right now, like they're going to be singing this back to you in your face. Hopefully. Yeah. Soon. I mean, yes. My life is definitely changing over the last four months, but it's changing while I'm locked in my house. Right. So <laughs> it's not like, it's not the most glamorous transition of life, but right. I am, I am like aware of the fact that when we do re-enter some version of normal, I'm going to be entering a different life than I exited. Totally different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so freaking cool. It's going to be exciting. So cool. Wow. Some of my favorite shows ever have been in Atlanta. You've never been to Atlanta? No, some of my favorite shows ever have oh, been in Atlanta. Oh, awesome. Oh, yes. We're ready to have you back. And make sure that you stop by Q99.7 when you come through. Absolutely. <laughs> Super excited. Well, thank you so much again. I've had your song in rotation for months. And you know we're not going to stop. We're going to keep it going on the playlist every single night. So all my Q listeners that are tuned in right now, make sure you tap into the playlist so that you can hear JP's song on the radio. Thank you so much again for your time today. And I don't know if I'm asking too much. Can we get maybe a little a, a little outro or something? Just you a little totally music. Let's and do you, it. <laughs> you want to pick this one too? Let's do... Ooh. Well, what's what's your personal favorite off the EP? I'm sure you ha that you have emotional ties to all of them, but I mean, one that you just I, love to play. Can I cuss on this? Oh yeah, let's do it. Okay, then let's I'll play three minutes. Okay. Yes. Make sure I'm in tune. I get insecure for stupid reasons. I tell myself I shouldn't, but I see it. And you get kind of stubborn when you're wrong. It just kind of stopping overall. I don't intend on holding it against you. I understand what comes from what we've been through. Like, I'm afraid you won't meet me halfway. And you're afraid I won't know how to stay. I think we got used to love it for the second. We both know way too much about each other's exes. It really should have been us all along. But you got a lot of great songs, got a lot of shit guys. And did more with three minutes than we'll do their lives. And we'll buy ourselves houses with our heartbreak songs. Fuck everybody else who ever treated us wrong. A lot of great songs, but a lot of shit guys. You did more with three minutes than we'll do it their lives. We'll buy yourselves houses with our heartbreak songs. Fuck everybody else who ever treated us wrong. You get really quiet when we're fighting. I talk too much and neither of us like it. But I just want to fix it right away. And you're scared of regretting what you'd say. But maybe when we've been together long enough For the shaking off the habits of a different love Forgotten everything we always thought it was Say, guys, I've got a lot of great songs About a lot of shit, guys And we more three minutes than we'll do with their lives And we'll buy ourselves houses with our heartbreak songs Fuck everybody else to ever treated us wrong A lot of great songs but a lot of shit guys, you know, all the three minutes to not do it their lives. We'll buy yourselves houses with our heartbreak songs. Fuck everybody else who ever treated us wrong. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. <laughs> I think we got used to love you for the second. We both know way too much about each other's exes. It really should have been us. It should have been us all along. But you got a lot of great songs about a lot of shit, guys. You did more than three minutes that will do with their lives. We'll buy yourselves houses with our heartbreak songs. Fuck everybody else who ever treated us. I'm trying to make you feel up.
I hope it's successful. It's a bad song about you. It feels disrespectful. How about you always fall asleep in my arms? Fuck everybody else who ever treated us wrong. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. I love that. Love that. Hey, thank you. Absolutely one of my faves because I'm like, I can feel it. And I know your <laughs> exes feel it too. <laughs> no shade. I love it so much. Thank you so thank much, you. JP. We appreciate you. Can't wait to see you at ATL. Can't wait to see what these crowds are going to look like singing your songs here in a couple of months. I'm excited about it too. Yes. I wish you the best of luck. You're absolutely incredible. So much soul, so much flavor, so real. So raw, so true. So thank you for your music. Thank you, thank you Jay. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it a whole lot. And thanks of for course. representing the song out there. You know it. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.